Hi everyone and thanks for viewing this video on a practical demonstration of modern malware. If you've seen Near Zook's presentation on modern malware then you've heard a good description on how the modern malware attack happens. However today I'd like to put it into practical terms and demonstrate more visually how an attacker might actually do this. As a quick review of what Near stated I wanted to launch an attack if, or if I wanted to launch an, atta an attack against your company my goal is not to hack your firewall, since that will simply take too much time and effort. My best approach is really to compromise one of your users. So I use these five steps of modern malware that you may have heard Nier describe. First, I bait the end user using a spear phishing attack, and which I'll demonstrate for you in a moment. Then I leverage an exploit on the user's machine, and I get him to download some shell code. This allows me to establish a back channel, and now I'm on the network and able to steal whatever I want. So. In our example study today, I'll demonstrate some of these steps so you can more clearly see how this happens. So, for our example, say that I wanted to get into Palo Alto Networks. Um, well, what I might do is go to Google here, <laughs> my favorite friend, and I might figure out who works at Palo Alto Networks first. Uh, maybe I do a search and find there's a guy named Santiago Polo who's recorded some videos on YouTube for Palo Alto Networks. Great, I figured that out. So now I'll do a quick Google search on Santiago Polo. Um, in this case, <laughs> it's fairly easy to do. Pretty quickly I find out what this guy's interests are. Um, like I can come here and I can uh, pretty easily see that he likes scuba diving and he has some interest in underwater photography because apparently on the scuba diving.com website he was featured photographer of some sort. I see him underwater here with a camera and some underwater pictures. Great. That's perfect. So now um, at this point I figured out who I want to a target and what his interests are. The next step is really going to be a spear phishing attack to bait this particular user. For this type of attack I, wanna, I want to email him um, and I want that email to come from someone he trusts. So maybe what I do is I take a look on LinkedIn to see who his friends are. I might also do this on Facebook or some other social networking site to really just figure this out. So if I type in Santiago Polo, um, quick search here uh, may find his actual profile. Yes, here he is. I might click on his name and then maybe click on his connections or his, again, if this were Facebook, I might click on his Facebook friends, something like that. Uh, let's see if I actually get uh, some connections here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so if I look through this list, um, I see quite a few connections and maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, look a little bit more closely at the people that work with him and maybe this guy's actually a good candidate Ed Bond Western Region SE Manager at Palo Alto Networks highly likely that this guy is his boss great perfect now <laughs> I know a trusted source for an email so I just need to impersonate this person and go ahead and email him so if I were really lazy I could set up an email account on Yahoo or Gmail or some other free email service um, and make it look like it's coming from his boss with a well-presented email that has a high likelihood of getting my my mark to click on the link. So what I'll do is I'll just compose a new message here and um, what I'll do is I'll write this message that says uh, something like this, hi Santiago, something like wife and I are doing a trip to the Bahamas for our anniversary, thought I'd ask your advice on an underwater camera, was checking on Amazon, think I could get away with something like this I've already pre-searched an underwater camera on Amazon. I will copy this link here. I will paste it into the email. So far that looks good. Um, I will come back and I'll sign it like this. Any other advice you could give would be great. Thanks, Ed. It all looks very legit, except for one little thing that I'm going to do here. Um, I've pasted in what looks like an Amazon link, but then what I'm going to do is conveniently hyperlink this not to Amazon, but to my desired executable, the shell code that I want. In this case, what I'm going to do is I have another bit of shell code here that I call Magic Jelly Bean. Um, actually, it's a key finder installer executable. So that's what I'm going to hyperlink to. So now this has a hyperlink to it, even though it's very well masked. So um, now I'm just going to say, all right, well, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and send that. Paloaltonetworks.com Subject Help with an underwater camera Perfect And I'll hit the send button there Great And now if I come over here uh, 
This is ma now me, Santiago Polo, the employee. I see an email here from Ed. Wife and I are doing a trip to the Bahamas for our anniversary. Thought I'd ask your advice on an underwater camera. Oh, okay. Well, gee, you know, this is coming from my boss. It looks legit. Came from Ed Bond. Um, maybe I failed to notice that it actually came from a Yahoo account, but hey, maybe I didn't fail to notice. So I clicked this link, even though it's not really going where it says it is. You'll see Magic Jelly Bean, Key Finder Installer. This is my malicious code. I click on this, and we'll see here that it links me to uh, that particular piece of code, and maybe I actually save it. So if I was a smarter hacker, um, I may actually do something worse than this. Um, I might actually mask that. I might redirect this to the actual Amazon page. I might hide that in an exploit in a, vo in a browser vulnerability. This method I just demonstrated in one flavor or another is exactly how some of the biggest, most compromising hacks were successful. Some like the RSA attack included compromising ex an Excel spreadsheet attachment that downloaded remote control executable. Others simply compromised a password via browser vulnerability. Uh, there's a variety of different mechanisms, but this is where an exploit is leveraged and an executable is triggered. Okay, So in any case, um, at this point I've done this and just going back to a quick review of how wildfire works. Uh, let me, oops, sorry, I'll just go back to this. Um, the way that this, the way the wildfire works is that uh, I downloaded that executable the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall uploads that file, that executable, to the wildfire cloud. The cloud then does the following, passes it through a file submission compare to see if we've actually seen this file before or not. If we haven't seen that file before, then it runs in the virtual test environment. So now the wildfire cloud can determine is this a malicious piece of software or is it benign? So is this malware or is it benign? If it's malware, then it's passed through an automated signature generator so that a signature can be created. That signature can then be pushed back down to the firewall so that we can prevent this malware from propagating any further. Okay? And then finally, an admin web portal is provided so that we can take a look at that. We could be notified of these things and we could see if it's, mal if it's malware or if it's benign. Okay, the wildfire portal is of course available to existing customers. You can just use your uh, existing support credentials to log in. Okay. Um, so fortunately for me in this case, in my example, Wildfire is enabled on the firewall that I'm going through. Um, let me go back here, and here's the firewall that I'm going through. And if I uh, click on the data filtering log here, uh, we will see Key Finder Installer here, and we will see that the action was forward. Okay. So that's how that works. And now, um, if I log into my wildfire portal oh. uh, log in here and we'll go to reports and we will see um, here's that key finder installer file right here uh, magic jelly bean and it is determined to be malware okay so great this of course could have been an email alert as well um, the uh, the benefit here is of course that while Santiago might have been compromised, administrators can be alerted to the issue so that action can be taken. A signature can be created dynamically by the wildfire automation engine, and the next victim can be protected either before infection or before a data loss event occurs. Okay, so that's it. Um, thank you so much for attending and viewing this video. I hope it was informative, and I look forward to seeing you again in our next video demonstration. As always, feel free to call or drop a line to your local Palo Alto Network systems engineer to learn more about the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall.